My name is Joseph Carter, and I am the Mink Man. When I was a senior in high school, I started learning about the American mink. I was told that mink were horrible, vicious little animals who were impossible to tame. Challenge accepted. I've been in love with mink ever since. I get mink from fur farms and give them a new life. In this new life, my mink live as naturally as possible, even hunting for their dinner the way a wild mink would. So come join me on my adventures as we learn more about this intense little predator, the amazing American mink. Today we're going to discuss a topic that's well overdue, and that is the relationships between my mink and dogs. This is probably one of the most common questions that I get on my videos. Why aren't the dogs biting the mink? Did the dogs ever make a mistake and grab the mink instead of the rat? So today I wanted to take some time out and explain in detail the various different relationships that my mink and dogs have towards one another, as well as the chances and, and frequency in which accidents happen. Let's start by describing two main types of relationships between my mink and dogs. The first is what I call a frenemy type relationship. The mink and dogs work together to achieve the same goal, namely catching rats. But neither animal really likes the other. This relationship is only possible due to the natural desire most dogs have to please their master. If my dogs did not love and respect me, they would happily kill the mink just like they do rats. But because they care about listening to my rules, they don't bother the mink, even if they really want to. Good boy, not biting the dog. Good boy. Hey, don't bite the dog. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Ah, 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 stay out of it. Let's make that. Stay out of it. Good girl. Good dog. Good dog. Good dog. The strong desire to please man, or what is often termed biddability, is unique to dogs. The level of biddability among dogs varies wildly between different breeds and individuals within a breed. Certain types of dogs, like retrievers and herding breeds, tend to have more individual dogs that have very high levels of biddability, while other types of dogs, like sight hounds, scent hounds, non-sporting breeds, and many terriers, tend to have more individuals that are quite low in biddability. But even a dog with very low biddability is generally speaking going to be more biddable than almost any other animal out there. Though they may not be jumping through fiery hoops at the master's command, most dogs with low biddability still care about what their master wants to some degree or another, which is more than can be said about most other animals. Mink on the other hand are not biddable at all. They don't care what a human wants, they only care about what they want. Some mink just ignore the dogs and go about business of catching rats without giving the dogs more than a passing glance. Naturally, they would fear canines in the wild, as mink are sometimes killed by coyotes. But my mink have learned not to fear dogs, just like they have learned not to fear humans. Some mink, however, are so aggressive that they actively seek opportunities to attack the dogs. Two mink, who were particularly bad at attacking dogs, were my famous red mink Washushe and a crazy black mink I named Inye Sabe. One thing about Inye Sabe is he's a really smart, sneaky mink. He kind of reminds me of those raptors from Jurassic Park. He'll set a trap for you, and when you're not paying attention, he gets you. This video shows just how patient and obedient Onsa really is. You might think that maybe she's scared of the mink or she's a coward, but Onsa has killed multiple raccoons, which are much bigger and tougher than a mink. She has no problem killing something the size of a mink. But because she respects me and knows that she's not supposed to, she leaves the mink alone, even when being attacked. This isn't the first time he's grabbed Onsa, and of course he grabs me, and I've got a video of him grabbing my friend as well. Mink are vicious little creatures, and they love biting every chance they get. Only the biddability of the amazing domestic dog saves the mink from the dog's wrath. Most of the dogs I've acquired as adults or older puppies actually wanted to kill the first mink they saw, and I had to guide them to focus their prey drive on pests like rats and raccoons, rather than harming my mink or other tempting livestock like chickens or sheep. High drive dogs being kept as pets are often very difficult to teach to leave livestock alone because they are not given a healthy outlet. 
All the dog is told is, no, don't get the chickens. No, don't get the cats. No, don't chase the horses. But they're never given a yes. Because this high drive dog is forced to be a pet and not allowed to release its natural desire to hunt, they often become frustrated and this frustration leads to them being sneaky. They leave the chickens alone until you turn your back for a moment. Or they don't chase the horses while you're looking, but when you're away they chase the horses anyway, despite your attempt to train them to do otherwise. I find that almost all dogs, regardless how high their drive or how low their bit ability, will typically follow the rules as long as they're consistently given a proper outlet for their desire to hunt. Since my dogs hunt pests for a living, they get plenty of opportunity to give in to their desire to hunt. This makes them more than happy to follow the rules I give them. When I say they can't bother the mink or other livestock we come across in the various places we do pest control, because they get plenty of yeses, they're more than happy to listen to the noes. I once had a little patterdale named Gremlin, who I got at about a year and a half old. The reason she was available to me was because her original owner couldn't train her to stop killing his goats and chickens. This owner rarely hunted with her, so she kept killing livestock despite her master's wishes. To make things even worse, she was actually used several times for hunting wild mink. You would think a dog who was gotten rid of for killing livestock and who'd been used for hunting wild mink would be the worst possible dog for me to own. However, she learned in a matter of only a couple weeks that mink were now off limits, as were sheep, goats, chickens, and anything else I told her to leave alone. Because I gave her lots and lots of opportunities to hunt for rats and raccoons, she was more than happy to follow my rules, despite the fact that she was completely disobedient to her previous owner. Part of the reason I feel like she listened to my rules, and not the rules of her previous owner, was the fact that I took her hunting so often. She was content and happy, and didn't feel the need to sneak around and kill things behind my back. In addition to the frenemy relationship where the dog respects the mink out of obedience and essentially does its best to avoid being bitten by the mink, there's the less common but much more pleasant type of relationship where the mink and dog are true friends. The best example I have of this are Fang and Onsa. As far as I have experienced, the only way for a dog and mink to become friends is for the mink to be raised with the dog from a very young age, typically before the mink is weaned off of milk. It doesn't really matter how old the dog is, but it's better if the dog hasn't been bitten by too many mink yet, thus potentially souring their trust of mink. A mink who is raised around a dog typically builds a close bond with the dog. They kind of imprint on the dog in a way, and often create stronger relationships with the dog than they do with the human who has bottle raised them. The dog and mink often play together and trust each other in unexpected ways. Oftentimes, if you're trying to build a bond with the mink yourself, allowing the mink to bond to a dog will lessen the mink's desire to bond to you, and you will become the third wheel in the relationship, with the young mink preferring to follow the dog around as if the dog is its mother, and play with the dog rather than playing with you. In order to have a mink bond with you and the dog, it's often necessary to make sure you spend more than 10 times as much time around the mink as the mink spends around the dog, or else the mink kit might only bond to the dog and have no interest in you. I often get the question asked on how a dog knows the mink is coming out of a hole and not mistake it for a rat. Oh, no, stay out of it. Good dog. Good dog. Stay out of it. Good dog. Wrapped it up, good girl. Wrapped it up, good girl. Good mink and good dog being watching. She knew the mink was on the other end. Good dog. It always amazes me at how well my dog does with distinguishing the rats from the mink. You would think they would get confused and bite the wrong animal. But as you could see here, even in the heat of the moment, she knew the mink was on the other end of that rat. Well, my assumption is they smell the difference and possibly also hear the difference as the mink is coming out of the hole. I'm sure sight is also a factor, but I know my dogs are aware of the mink before they even see it, because they will often back away from a hole before the mink appears, in order to avoid being bitten. Oh, there's the mink. Watch, your guess. Watch yourself, guys. The mink's coming out. I actually trust my dogs around the mink more than I do people. You may notice I never allow people with me to use sticks to hit the escaping rats, like you may see in other people's ratting videos. The reason for this is I don't trust people, myself included, to not accidentally hit a mink or a dog in the process. 
A hit to the head for a mink could easily be just as fatal for a mink as it would for a rat. I actually trust my dogs to safely identify a mink or rat flying out of a hole more than I trust myself. Get out of it! Good girl. Good dog. 